In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the very basic beginning of CSS, which stands for Cascading Style Sheets. The best way to use a cascading, cascading Style Sheet is in an external file, but I'll be teaching you that um, in one of the upcoming exercises. In this exercise, I'm just going to create about the simplest HTML page that I can, which we have our doc type, our language, we've declared our head section, which has our title, our care set, and then we put the style tags, opening and closing of style here, and all of our style sheets are embedded at the top of our page. Then we close the head section. It is critical. In some browsers it will work if you put it elsewhere, but for grading I want the style to be completely enclosed inside the head tags. And then your content is in the body. Now I've used an ID on the body for the container because I want to show you how I use it because I'm going to be using that in almost every video going forward. So we have a simple div tag. We have one H1 tag which just has the word content in here. And then we close the body and the HTML page. So the HTML is incredibly simple. And I'm demonstrating this in Dreamweaver because it will pretty much apply each step as I do it. Now, this is an important concept for testing and debugging. To check each CSS style as you put them in, if you're trying to find something that's broken, the slash slash comments out a single line. So I'm going to take these off one at a time and show you how it works. Now, when you're creating a style, you here I'm redefining properties for the body style. So I just use the word body. And there's two ways to do this opening tag. People will either put it right here, and it's actually not a tag, it's um curly bracket. You can either put it directly after the word body, or you can put it directly on the next line. I do it on the next line because I like to see them all line up, because it's very common to have an error where you're missing one. And that's the way I learned to program years ago, and so I still do it that way. I don't care if you do it that way, I just want you to do it consistently, whatever way you do it. Now I'm changing properties of the body tag. We have the body tag here. It has to exist to change it. Otherwise, the style wouldn't make any difference. So we're going to set the background color. And when I flip over here, you'll see it changes it. Now, I really love Dreamweaver. So there's a way to do this in Optana as well. Um, with the background color, with Dreamweaver, you can just double click <coughs> and you can select any color you want, put in your semicolon and it will apply. Now if you don't see your styles applying for some reason, double check to make sure that you've closed each one with a semicolon. If it's not there, they won't work. Now I'm changing the font family for the entire page. And now I'm using a font family here and with the font family, it will go through these fonts in order. If it exists, it will use the first one. If it doesn't, it will move on to the next. If you have a space in the name, you need to enclose it in quotes. So watch the font here when I apply it, because this is a serif font. Sans serif fonts are generally easier to read on web pages. There we go, sans serif. And color always is always the font face color. That is not good contrast, but it's okay. We're going to fix it in a minute. Then I have the container. The hashtag in front of the container is because we're modifying the ID. So we're, it's going to impact everything in the div. So we're changing the background color. And you'll notice background color is inherited. Actually, either there, it's just shining through until we override it. So we're going to override that. And the one that's closer is going to be the one that counts. So we set the background color of the container to white. I've changed the text align for the interior of the div tag to center. This does not center my box here. The div tag itself is not centered. You can see it stretches almost all the way out. It's got some automatic formatting. Um, on margins outside of it if you don't override that. 
but it does not center that box. Okay, let's go back. The next thing I want to do is set a minimum height for my box, 300 pixels. And I recommend minimum height over height because the minimum height will allow it to grow. But it looks odd on many pages if you have little or no content to have this box shrink up. I've set the width to 300. Typical page width is going to be 960. And you'll notice it automatically is left aligned if you don't change that. The margin is how you center it. If you do a margin, now the 15 pixels is referring to the top and bottom because I like to show a bit of the body background color. So that's making 15 pixels at the top, minimum of 15 pixels at the bottom, but auto to the left and right. It's the auto to the left and the right that forces this to center. And then I'm putting a border around the box, and I've made it really large. This does not look good. It would look better at like that, but to make it really obvious, there you go. And if I wanted to, I could show you. padding, which it just is adding space here between the content and the external part. There's a better way to show that, and I'll show you. I've got a lecture on the box model that I'll show you later. Okay, and then here, I've set the font color up here in the body tag, and since I don't redefine it in the div, it stays that color. But watch, when I redefine it for H1, whatever is more precise is going to override and it'll change color. So even though I define color here, when I redefine it for H1 here, it takes over. But if I was outside of this, the rest of my content, will be the original font color. So that's just some real basics, and you're going to do something very similar. I don't want you to use the same colors as me. I don't want you to use the same sizes, but you're going to put a box in and a little bit of content and try playing with some basic tags. And if you're having trouble determining, I mean, I've only shown you a few tags, where you can go to find HTML tags, I'm sorry, CSS tags, There's a CSS reference at the W3 schools, and I'll put a link in the classroom for this, so that you can pretty much see all of the CSS properties. And I'd start with just basic appearance properties, but you can see properties for each one. Appearance, border, these give you all of your options so that you can play with them and see how to define them. And it gives you some examples. So I'll put that link in here. With the CSS reference, I'll put that into the uh, classroom page so that you can go and play with a few of the different CSS tags just to play with it and see how you can start styling.